Hey y'all, how you doing out there? Thank you so much for all your support, your donations, and your emails. Um, last week was a pretty difficult week for me. Um, it is now Monday, sometime in September. Okay, that's how much I've lost track of things. I had about six families repatriate last week. Um, I had to send air, um, airport shuttle for everyone. I had to um, get everyone in a hotel, find a place for everyone to stay, um, you know, and um, it, and then uh, help to find you a place. And then after that, I still have the Exodus house. I'm still the mother of a four-year-old. And um, so needless to say, things have gotten a lot more hairy than I expected. Um, but still, I'm very grateful and very happy that the Exodus is upon us. And I'm still a filmmaking student. A lot of people don't realize I'm in film school. The entire month of September was my filming, um, filming my thesis. And um, I didn't get a whole lot done because of production issues. Um, a lot of people, I decided to make the uh, thesis about people repatriating and a lot of people did not want, they said, oh, it's a great idea, but they didn't want to be on camera. Um, people signed releases, wanted the releases back. But anyway, um, if you emailed me, I got your email, okay? Um, but I have people who are coming more urgently. And so what I'm doing is I'm prioritizing. I'm looking to hire um, someone to assist me, one of the young ladies who are here. Um, she is a professional. And, um, you know, uh, as long as soon as she gets settled, I'm going to ask, you know, her for her assistance. Um, and hopefully the idea is to get this to the level of a business um, that I can actually hire people um, or, you know, people can volunteer their services because you need a work permit in order to, um, to, uh, to have a job in Tanzania, right? But in any event, um, I think the jobs that I will be creating are specialized and specifically for us, okay? Uh, so what is this video about, Renee? Um, this video is about how to get out of your own way, okay? And it's something that I'm seeing more and more, the more people that I see repatriating, the more I'm seeing this with y'all. Oh yeah, I'm not naked. I'm wearing, I'm wearing it. I don't know if you could see, I, I am wearing clothes. Um, but the more and more of you are, who are repatriating, the more I'm seeing more patterns and behavior that needs to be corrected right? Um, and so I think you need to get out of your own way. You need to learn how to get out of your own way, okay? Because a lot of you who are still there in the matrix, whether you're in the United Kingdom or Canada or um, wherever you are, you are, you are under a spell, okay? And they are, they, they have done a number on you with fear and anxiety and depression and confusion, mixed messages, mixed signals. The only thing you need to do right now is to listen to your ancestors. If they're telling you to pack and leave, you pack and leave, but don't pack no anxiety. Don't pack the depression. Don't pack indecision. Don't pack the confusion. When you decide to pack your airline ticket, to buy your airline tickets, you are not taking that stuff with you. You need to leave that in America. And I know it's something to say and hard to do when you get here, but you are not coming to the same place. Do not bring America 2.0 to Africa, because if you come here under that confusion, Africa will not work for you. You have to make a conscious decision to leave these things behind. Okay, you have to be about it when you say, okay, I bought my ticket. I am out. I am out. I am leaving all of that behind me. You have to find something to be happy about. Don't act like somebody dragged you here against your will. Don't act like this is somewhere that you're supposed to be and you don't know why you're here. And you, you know, you're looking for all these roadmaps and signals to see if you're on the right path. You're on the right path. You bought your ticket. You're out of there. Get out of there. Hold on to that truth and rock with it. 
Okay, I don't understand how somebody could repatriate and still live in doubt and fear. It's over. It's done. You are off the plantation. Don't be like when the, when the slaves left America and they went uh, the south and they went north. They brought that mentality along with them. Okay, you need to unpack and 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 remove that plantation process out of your head, out of your thinking, because. Um, I know that's what the Exodus house is about, is about that healing space to teach you and talk to you and me trying to put some of my, my energy inside of you so that you, uh, you, you can release some of that fear and stress. Okay. These African people are not your enemies. Okay. They might be slow, but they know where they're going. Okay. They might, um, they might take the long way, but they know how to get there safely right? You need to trust these African people. You need to trust your African ancestors. And I'm going to say Africa in general, because not all of you are going to show up in Tanzania, right? So I'm going to use, I'm going to generalize the term of, of Africa, right? Um, not all of you are going to show up where I am, wherever you show up, be a blessing to the African people around you who are trying to help you, who are trying to be kind to you. And that, you know, I, I've just segue into, into something that, let's see, because I had to make notes for y'all because I'm seeing way too much and I am not going to absorb any of your anxiety and your fear and your depression and your confusion inside of me. I have already dispelled that. I don't have to handle it. I'm not going to deal with it. The only thing I need to do is stay positive for my child and, and continue the course with whatever I started. Okay. I'm not going to do it with your foolishness. I'm not going to do it with the foolishness. So if I go silent on you or quiet on you, that is me trying to heal and hold myself back because I am not the person who gets loud. I'm not the person who is going to get wild. I'll vent. I'll say what I have to say for a minute and then I move on. Okay. I'm not that person who you're going to come and unload and unpack and try to confuse my, my piece, right? I will drop you like a hot potato. If you are confused, keep your confusion to yourself. When I say confusion, meaning you will know if you're going, if you're coming, if you're left, if you're right. No, you have to find it inside of you to know what is left and what is right and what is the arrow for up and what is the arrow for down. You have to find that inside of you to calibrate yourself. I cannot calibrate for you. I have a four-year-old that I need to, that is my number one priority. Okay. The repatriation is important to me. The Exodus house is important to me. All of these are important to me. My number one priority is Johanna. That is who, that is who I brought into this world. Okay. And I'm teaching her my values and my, and, and my skills so that she, um, does not become, uh, someone who I can't handle. I'm teaching her how to be self-sufficient and how to respect other people. Right. So I don't know how, how some of y'all are going to receive this message, but you just need to understand that anything that does not seem like right is wrong. Okay. You need to have some kind of moral compass to know what is right and what is wrong. And if it is wrong, don't do it. Don't speak it. Don't allow it into your presence. It has no place for you. And if you think it's wrong in your head, don't sure, please do not take it out your head and put it in my head because I'm not going to look at it, it like it's wrong. I'm going to look at it like you're wrong. Okay. Okay. So like I was saying, these African people, y'all need to respect these African people. This is their home. Okay. They have their children, their grandparents. They have been raised here. They speak the language. They know the food. You are not superior to them in no way, shape or form. Okay. None of their lineage have been broken. They did not sell you into anything. They are your friends right? They look at you like brothers and sisters that they have just lost and they've, they, they're trying to rebuild the bridge to you, right? If even if you have a, 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 a um, professional relationship, these people do not look at you the way you look at them. Okay. And you, that, that kill or be killed. And, 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 and that, um, that y'all, y'all on these, this, um, this Machiavellian mentality, like everybody's out to get you or, or here to do something to you, you are incredibly wrong. Okay. So you need to dispel that. 
you need to dispel that. This doesn't mean that you should not be aware and be and look out for it for for danger and pitfalls, which is everywhere. Okay, but the ones that you come in contact with, that you find in your circle, that you find something to like about, that you find to trust, right? Or or maybe it is that you don't know how to trust anybody. Maybe it is that you think that everybody is out to get you. Okay. And maybe getting out of America is a good idea for you because if you think everybody's out to get you, you're going to look at everybody the same way and treat everyone the same way. And guess what? You're going to bring America 2.0 to Africa. These Africans are going to start treating you the exact same way. Okay. So with that being said, dispel the spirit of arrogance, right? Dispel the spirit of arrogance. You don't know nothing. I don't know anything. I don't know a damn thing, okay? I don't know anything. I know enough to know that I don't know, okay? This, the, the African cultures have been here for hundreds of thousands of years. I know well enough to know I don't know a damn thing. They have their own laws. They have their own processes of doing things. This is not like some sand heap that you're gonna come and make it into, um, make it into what you want it to be. No, these people have laws for everything, right? That that uh, gem video that I posted, there are laws to buying gems. There are laws to buying gems. There are laws to doing everything. You want to start a real, est a, a real estate business, there are laws. You want to rent something, there are laws. You want to um, have a peacock in your backyard, there are laws. You can't just put a peacock in your back backyard in Tanzania, maybe in Kenya, but not in Tanzania. Okay, because the government owns the land and the and the the beautiful creatures that live on the land and the minerals that come out of the land. So they have a system in place to protect their people from uh, plunderers and pirates. Okay, so you have to respect the laws and try to figure out a way that um you know go along with the process. If the process says you know, if, it, if they're telling you that the process to do this is this, that's the process. Okay. Go do your research and understand how to do the process, but dispel the spirit of ignorance that you're coming here to, to put switch on a light. I know not for these Tanzanian people. This is, this is Wakanda, honey. You can't sell Wakanda, nothing. You can't give them no vibranium. They got the vibranium. Okay. They got the agriculture. They got the infrastructure. They got everything that, that you could possibly want. It is for you to come and participate and learn from them, okay? And if you find a better a, a way to make a better mouse trap, make a better mouse trap, okay? But dispel the spirit of arrogance, right? Instead of the spirit of arrogance, you need to adopt a spirit of generosity. Give of your time, give of your energy, give of your money, give of your resources. If you have a scarf that you don't like, you don't like, you don't want somebody love it, give it to them, right? If you have something even so small, a token, give. I'm going to tell you something. This place, this whole entire continent of Africa has no social services system, okay? Somebody giving you their time and their energy, they're planting a seed in you, okay? Uh, they probably have no hopes. They're just doing it because this feels like the right thing to do. And so they know that somewhere along the line, doing the right thing is going to pay off. So you need to also figure out how to do the right thing, right? So for me, I haven't put like a price out there that I need people to pay me this, that amount of money, or I won't talk to them, or I won't this, or I won't that, but maybe I should, because as one uh, person said, if it's free, nobody respects it right? If I'm sending a driver for you and I'm coming for you and I'm taking you all around, that's something else that I should be doing, okay? Now, let's not talk about me, all right? Because I already know how y'all are. If somebody don't say, give me this, you're not going to give, right? If somebody don't say, oh, I want, you won't give, okay? Forget about me because I know how y'all are. And if it come up time where I see like you're taking advantage of me, I'm going to start asking, okay? Let's talk about these African people. If a Dalali comes, a Dalali is an agent, a real estate agent in Tanzania. If a Dalali comes to meet you somewhere with a house, he took a Boda Boda. That Boda Boda needs gas. You have to pay for the gas to come to see you, okay? Because there is no, 
I mean, they're doing it for your benefit, right? You should be willing to give something so that they can pay for the gas to come and see you, right? Next, they need a fee. Here in Tanzania, these Dalalis, they charge like a daily fee. So if it's it, you give them 10,000 T shillings, they'll be fine. 10 to 20,000 T shillings, depending on what you did to them. If you had them out all day from morning until night, give them a little more than 10,000 T shillings or give them something or find it. They, they shouldn't have to ask you, right? That they need a little something for um for showing you the houses they have children at home they have um food to buy they they uh, come on come on right think about other people other than yourself i know you come from a capitalist country and it's a selfish place to be and you know you think it all about you but these people you treat them well they will treat you well you give them a little something they and that encourages them to now say okay I'm working with a mama and, you know, she gives me a little something or she gave me something extra and I know she wants a house here. I'm going to go my go the extra mile. OK, so you all need to support the Dalalis just so you understand that this is a necessity. OK, kindness goes a long way uh, in Africa. I, I, and I'm and I'm and I've only been to one African country, but I come from Jamaica, which is all 54 countries put together on one small island. OK. That's what Jamaica is. We have the Congolese. We have everything. We have everything. The spirituality, everything is one country with a 54 African nations tied into that one place. Because when they abolished slavery, when the British captured people still slave trading, they didn't take them back to Africa. They dumped them in Jamaica. So we have people who have never been enslaved. We have people who have who, who know, know nothing about no slavery. Okay but they have the culture intact. So when I'm telling you, right, uh, you, kindness goes a long way. You have to be conscious of that. This is not to say to throw all your money away and let somebody take advantage of you, right? But learn how to be kind, use your words wisely, use your emotions wisely, the spirit of anger and arrogance and anxiety and frustration those are the works of the devil and they only attract more like it. Okay. So don't think you're going to come up in here with all of that. And I'm going to embrace you or bring you around me or have you around me. I can't afford that. Okay. I live in a place where I have to be a hundred percent about it. I have to be certain about what I'm doing. I have to be 100% happy. Uh, all the time, no matter what is going on. I'm in Africa, honey. I ain't got nothing to be angry about, right? Um, next, okay, right, the drivers, right? So the driver is going to take you all around and all around the universe. Some of you who roll with me, you know the driver has a, has a daily rate. If you're rolling together, you split that rate, give them a little extra something. They will show up for you early. They will even start looking for you. I know one lady, she got a blessing just, just like that off of one of these drivers. So y'all need to, y'all need to understand that the African people that you're encountering first, they're not, they're not like throwaways, right? There is one, one fellow that <laughs> there is one fellow that he works, he works with me. If I say jump, jump, if I say how high he will do it. What he is the guy that goes and gets fabric and 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 does any little thing that needs to be done, right? And you know somebody might mistake him for just a little uh, nobody, right? And may need his services, right? So you don't know who these people are. They might be dressed for work. They might have like a, a old t-shirt on and some old slippers on or whatnot. And you, you hear you come disrespecting them because of how they look and you don't know who they are. You don't know if they were on television the night before and they're just humble, right? So you need to treat all of these African people with some kind of respect. Like, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not the cream of the crop. You're not coming here to belittle them and undermine them and make them feel inferior in no type of way. I don't care if they're your gardener, if they're your maid, if there's somebody that you don't think ain't nothing is a waiter or waitress. You don't know who the hell that person is or who they have connections to to help you. 
right? So you need to come through here with a spirit of gratefulness and kindness and warmness, right? I'm not going to deal with, I'm, I, Renee, I'm not going to deal with the foolishness. So if you're an arrogant person and if you use cuss words and you don't know how to handle yourself or control your anger or control your emotions, I, Renee, will isolate you and put you in a box because I cannot handle that. Okay, I already got these fundies out, fundies, sorry, my pronunciation. I already got these fundies out here driving me crazy. I, I'm a, I'm building a whole entire house from scratch. I ain't been in this country but now two months, right? I can't, I can't afford it, right? The next thing is some of y'all, some of y'all, uh, hmm. let me just, let me just uh, get a minute here. Okay, I'm back. Some of y'all talking about some buying land. I'm, I want to buy land, and isn't it better to buy land, and I'm not going to do this if I can't buy land. Let me explain something to you. You don't even own land in America. You may think you own a house, but you don't own the land, okay? You miss tax payments on that land, and you will find out who owns that land. So don't come up in North Africa talking about, I can't own land, so why should I do this, or why should I do that? Ask yourself that question. What do you own in America that they can't come and take away from you? Even the birds are agreeing with me. What do you own? You own nothing. Don't get caught up on you can't own land in Tanzania. You can't own land here. You can't own land there. Let me explain something to you about Tanzania. I don't know about the rest of Africa, but I'll tell you about this country. Nobody owns no kind, no kind of land in Africa. Okay, no, in Tanzania, sorry. No one owns land in Tanzania. The government owns all the land and all the resources. You can get a nice, good, tidy, long lease if you want to directly from the government and you can consider yourself that you bought that, right? And you pay your taxes, right? The um, And then for foreigners, you cannot own land. You cannot do the business directly with the government because you're a foreigner, Excuse me. And if you know the history of these places, they, they that's very important to protect themselves from the Dutch and the Germans and the, the British and everybody else who's looking at their land like they can come and own it. OK, and Tanzania has a right to say that they have been there with the Germans. OK, they have been there with them. They, when they were talking about the Berlin Conference and cutting up Africa, this was one of the places they were cutting up and taking the resources. So they have a right to not give land to anybody, okay? Me, personally, I have a long lease. The, most le the longest you can get a lease is 10 years, right, as a foreigner. And when you get that 10-year lease, um, there are things that you have to do additionally. I'm going to make another video about that because a 10 year lease is almost the same as, oh, as, as purchasing land. So you have to have all different kinds of ducks in a row. You have to have all different kinds of things put together in order to do that. Okay. So don't get caught up on buying land, right? Don't get caught up on none of that stuff, right? Don't stop tripping yourself up. Stop putting yourself in a position where you're, you're, you're giving yourself more anxiety and more things to think about and more things to confuse yourself. That is not helping you, okay? It is not helping your children. It is not helping your wife. It is not helping your repatriation. You, you putting all different kinds of things into your head. The thing that you need to put in your head more and first and foremost when you repatriate is to find housing, right? Which brings me to another thing. Some of y'all are complaining about your 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 house right housing situation you can't find a house that's perfect moving ready i'm gonna tell you something every day you complain about that house not being a house you can't find that's moving ready that's the day that you are complaining that you are spending in your hotel okay this is one of the, one of the importance of the exodus house is transitional housing so you all need to understand that you're not going to find it perfect right, like right on the spot but if you need need to get out of that hotel you get yourself something a bridge place and you hold on to that until you find your better until you find okay this is my forever home but if you think you're going to take a plane and come all the way and find your forever home within a few days that is not going to be that that's not going to happen it's going to take you at least two weeks to find your forever home now 
If you do not have that kind of money to spend two weeks in a hotel, find yourself something that you can work with. You all are getting hung up. It's not perfect. It's not moving ready. It's not this. It's not that. It's not Renee's house. Don't worry about Renee's house. Okay, let me explain to you what you need to worry about. Every single time, it has, has been my experience, if you find a house that you like, the landlord in, in Tanzania, I don't know, maybe in the same in, um, in, in the rest of Africa, but the landlord will fix everything. So if you go in there and the sink is torn up and the floor is torn up and this something is wrong and the roof doesn't look right, they will fix it. The deposit that you pay, they take that deposit and they will fix all of your complaints. So you have to learn to look at things with an eye of potential rather than, oh, ooh, this, ooh, it don't have that, ooh, uh, that's terrible, ooh, and pick up, pick and pick on all of these things. Jamaican people say, oh, pick on, pick until you pick shit, right? Take your time and look at things and look at the potential of the thing. Don't look at it that, oh, nobody has lived in there for over a year. If somebody was living in there now, you couldn't get it. Anyway, don't be hung up on stupid nexus. Uh, I'm all over the place here, you know, um, learn how to be, learn how to be flexible. As Jamaican people say, walk punk crooked till you cut straight, meaning you might have to rough it. You might have to take something that's small. You might have to take something that's inconvenient until you get out of that hotel, until you can find your forever home. If you're, you had a dream and your pockets don't match up to the dream, that you can always look for a bridge property in between, okay? Walk punk crook crooked till you cut straight. That's how Jamaican people say it, right? And use your critical thinking skills, people. Please, please, please. I mean, I there must be an app out there to help you develop critical thinking skills. Some of you are hung up on these dumb ideas that, oh, I'm not gonna rent somewhere until I know what it looked like when it rains, or, you know, some dumb ideas that have been fed to you by other YouTubers. And for that, I apologize. Not everybody that you see on these small screens are people that you need to be taking advice from. Because if it doesn't rain for three months, are you going to spend three months in a hotel? A lot of these proper, a lot of these areas don't have, they have rainy seasons and dry seasons. Then the dry season sometimes lasts nine months. You're going to sit in a hotel, in a hotel for nine months. Are you going to stay in America until you figure out if it rains or not? Oh, come on. Come on. Use your critical thinking skills. The exodus is upon us. There are more people, there are more people right now looking for a house than what's available, than what is perfect for you. Okay. There is more people looking for a house. If you see something that you want and you can afford it, jump on it. Don't sit up, sit around and think about, boom, oh, this and this and pick over that and pick over this and pick over that. If that's the house that you think is per per perfect for you and your children, you jump onto that property. Ain't nobody got no time for that. Nobody got no time for that. These people are here and I'm not the only one. Okay. I am not the only one you who know me aren't the only ones who are coming to Tanzania. You who I put up in uh, at, at the Azura Hotel, you're not the only ones who are coming to Dar es Salaam. There are people out there who are watching these videos and they're they're doing their research. They've bought their tickets. They've come to come to Dar es Salaam. They have hired someone to help them do things. And they're getting around and snatching up all of these properties. So don't don't play these kinds of games because ain't nobody got no time for that. Okay. And these landlords, they don't. The Dalalis don't. We are moving rapidly from a buyer's market into a seller's market because a lot of you have increased. They are now seeing more, even though I'm the same one sending six people to look at one property. And the landlords are like, oh, we have a lot of people looking at this property now. No, it's just me. It's me sending all my folk to you. OK, so in any event, um, that's that's one. And yeah, so th those are some of the things. I mean, I, this video is going a little bit longer than what I wanted to, but I needed to get up and talk to you about some act right, because I don't know. I, I don't know where your mind is at. Right. But all I know is you can't bring America 2.0 to Africa. I'm not going to have it. These Africans are not going to have it. 
okay? And listen, you are only hurting yourself. These self-defeating ideas, these self-defeating behaviors, and these self-defeating patterns of thoughts that you have in your head, this, um, uh, all of these anxieties and indecision lead to nothing but procrastination, and procrastination is the death of your invention and your creativity. So if you're going to sit there and procrastinate about, mm, I don't know if I'm going to do this, no, the time for procrastination has passed. If you have the bug in your butt to get up and get out of America and come to Africa, or get out of England or get out of Canada and come to Africa. If you, the butt has jumped up in your butt, you have to be sure. Ain't no half stepping. Ain't no half stepping. You step into this greatness. You step into this oneness, okay? With respect. That's what I need from y'all. You need to respect yourselves and respect the people around you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody. Y'all need some act right and you're not going to act wrong around me. You feel me? All right, that's what I got. Pieces. Love y'all. Pieces. <laughs> Peace. Love y'all. Bye.